In this exercise, we'll write a rectangle abstract data type using a class. We'll write several constructors, including a default constructor, and we'll write a few member functions for computing the area and the perimeter and for scaling the rectangle. It's going to look a lot like triangle, but what we want to do is actually think about it from scratch in terms of coming up with the data representation and then making sure that we initialize it properly and writing member functions using that data representation. So I'll pause for a few seconds if you'd like to work on it on your own, and then I'll switch over to Lobster and we'll look at it together. Let's go ahead and write our rectangle ADT in Lobster, and we'll just start with just defining a rectangle class. Before we actually move on to implementing the class, let's write some test cases. And that way, once we're done writing, we can just run our test cases immediately and make sure that everything is working correctly. So the first thing we want to be able to do is to construct a default rectangle. And that should give us a one by one rectangle. So if we actually go ahead and compute the area, then that should be one. And the perimeter should be four. We also want to be able to scale this. So let's go ahead and scale it by a factor of a half. And the end result should be that the area should be a quarter. And the perimeter should now be just two. We'd also like to be able to construct a square just by passing in a single argument to the rectangle constructor. So let's construct a two by two square. And then the area of that rectangle should be four, and the perimeter should be eight. Finally, we'd, we'd also be able to construct a rectangle that's not a square. So we can pass in the width and the height separately. And then the area of that two by three rectangle should be six, and the perimeter should be 10. All right, we now have our test cases. So let's go ahead and start working on the implementation of the ADT itself. The first thing that we need is we need some data representation. And we'll allow our rectangles to have non-integral width and height. So we'll use doubles for our data representation. We need to store the width and the height separately. Once we have a representation, we should think about representation invariance, what must be required from the values in that representation in order to make this a valid rectangle. So the one that comes to mind is that the width and the height must both be strictly positive. And we'll make sure to check that when we need to. So now we can go ahead and move on to writing the constructor. So let's start with the most general constructor, the one that takes in the width and the height separately. So we, what we need to do is just initialize our member variables using the values that were passed in. And then in the body of this function, what we'll actually do is make sure that our representation invariants are met. So we'll assert that the, result, that the resulting width and height are both greater than zero. All right, now that we have the general constructor, we can write our other constructors by delegating to the general one. So let's write the one that constructs a square. It's gonna just take in one side in, and then all it needs to do is delegate to the general constructor with that side value for the width and the height. We don't need to check for representation invariance here because the, the general constructor will do that once the delegation happens. Finally, we can write our default constructor, which just constructs a one by one rectangle. So we'll go ahead and delegate to the general one there as well. Now that we have the constructors, we can move on to the member functions. So we need a member function to compute the area. The area is going to be a double. We also don't need to modify the rectangle in order to compute what its area is. So we'll make that function a const function, member function. Then the area of a rectangle is just the width times the height. Okay, same story for the perimeter. We don't need to actually modify the data. So we make that one const as well. 
and then we just need to return twice the sum of the width and the height. Finally, we need a function to scale a rectangle. So there's, there isn't going to be a return value there. It's going to take in a scaling factor, which will be a double. And now it does need to modify the data, so we won't mark it as const. And then we just need to modify the width to be the factor times the old width. And we'll use the times equals operator to do that. And same thing with the height. OK, now we have everything implemented. Looks like it compiles. So let's go ahead and run it. And we'll just run it quickly to the end. Because if an assertion fails, then Lobster will actually pop up a message saying that an assertion failed. If everything happens correctly and all of our assertions pass, then nothing will end up popping up. So let's go ahead and do that. And everything seemed to have worked.